and gentlemen, boys and girls, and lovers of drones everywhere, welcome to Thursday Night Live. I'm Ken Heron, and this is Jody, a.k.a. Kong FPV. Hey, man. What's up, brother? How you doing? Good to have you on for the very Good. first time as a co-host. It's awesome. Thanks for having me, man. He's broadcasting live via Starlink from the backwoods of Alabama. <laughs> Can you hear the banjos? Can you hear them? <laughs> we're we're going to talk about a lot of drone events coming up, including uh, the Slosh Drone Derby and Cas wait. Castle Crash and the South Florida Drone Meet and my thing and a whole bunch of others. And Jody has some dirty jokes, so gather the kids around the street. <laughs> yeah. What are, what are you drinking there, man? What are you drinking? Uh, I have, uh, well, a, a little Red Bull to keep you going for right. the show. Right, right, right. That's gone, so got a little Dr. Pepper in my oh. weed. FPV Dr. Pepper, food. okay. And that's it? Just Dr. Pepper, huh? And he's gone. I told you it's in the backwoods. Well, that's a good. Oh, there he. Okay. Am I All right. freezing now? You froze up a little bit. What's what is that apple juice you had there? Apple juice? Is it hitting the fan mid show? Yeah, it's all right. Is is you, your family in the other room watching Netflix or something? You might want to tell them to play cards for a minute while you're on. Um, I have got some great, great stuff to are. share with you. Am some. I back? So you're back. You're back. Can you hear me, bud? Watching Netflix or something? <laughs> uh, possibly. Yeah, don't watch the stream while you're on the stream. I'm gonna mute that real quick. That's gonna, yeah, uh, if, one if, moment. If you're watching the I'll stream, right back. Another, okay. I've got great videos from you, the viewer. Well, and, uh, he'll be back in a minute. I've got, I'm gonna mute him. I've got a hundred dollar gift certificate from camerabutter.com to give away tonight. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. You back? What I miss? Oh, nothing. You didn't miss anything. You didn't miss anything. You're just in time for us to thank our biggest sponsor, ladies and gentlemen, the Cadillac of processed meat, Pigeon Jerky. You'll enjoy Pigeon Jerky, Pigeon Jerky, the Cadillac of processed meats. You'll enjoy Pigeon Jerky, Pigeon Jerky, and you'll give your family a treat. It's balanced nutrition to help them grow. Yeah. And it's full of fiber to make them go. Here we go. You enjoy pigeon jerky. Pigeon jerky. The Cadillac of processed meat. Yeah. All right. Jody? Jody, buddy? What? Jody? <laughs> he literally is in uh, deep in the heart of Alabama. Uh. You there, bud? There he is. I'm back. Welcome back. <laughs> Where'd you go? Oh, you had to blur your background. I see. He literally is. Jody, Alabama. buddy. I'm here. You got to stop watching the stream while you're on the stream. It's going to slow things down. You you're, make a good point. Yeah. You're, if you want to see the chat, you can do a pop out and it'll use less bandwidth. Uh, well, <laughs> that's too late. I remember when I was at the Big Red Barn doing these streams five years ago, and I had the same kind of issues. I would try to watch the stream while I'm on the stream. Uh, uh, anyway, so this will well, be interesting. He'll be, he'll, he'll be popping in and out all night. Right? You never know when he's going to be there. Well, hopefully that took care of the issue. I, did, I wasn't do double streaming earlier when we tested, and it seemed to work fine. Okay, good. All right. Awesome. Uh, so what's, what's new with you, Jody? Tell us about, uh, tell us about Castle Crash coming up. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. No. We got a little while with Castle Crash. Okay. For, forget, all about, up. forget all about, forget all about Castle true. Crash. This here, right here, forget it. Don't write it down. Don't go to the website. Don't go to the link that's in the description because it's <laughs> all about this now. Tell us about it. I'm just saying we're getting a little, a little, we've got very few days left. This is going to be on April 6th in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh-huh. It's Lost Furnace. Uh, it's formerly, uh, obviously, Ironwork Furnace, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Here's what it looks like. This, this is what it looks like. Yeah. 
they uh there's a lot of deaths there that happen they do a haunted house there it's supposedly haunted yeah all all kinds of fun stuff but we <laughs> have never been able to fly fpv there before right cuz you it, cuz it's a historic monument and well, you have to get permission right right and, and you could well you couldn't even get permission to fly fpv they wouldn't allow it but they would allow uh, GPS guys to come in, and you would have to pay to fly and take some GPS video. Right, or do it but six years ago point. like 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 I did from, from here. This is, All right, there you go. Yeah, six years ago. But uh, so you're going to have access to the whole place? Uh, as far as I know, Pat says we got free reign to rip through the place. Oh, my gosh. Uh, there's going to be some spectator section so i'm not sure exactly where they're going to be setting that up but uh the i'm trying to find the event right side here just so i don't have any details mixed up uh -huh. it is going to be saturday april 6th starting at noon to 7 p.m right uh it gets tickets for 25 dollars uh, open to everyone, family friendly. Uh, you don't have to fly drones. Come out and watch people fly drones. Right, and you get uh, um, every everybody who gets uh, who pays to get in and fly, they get free tetanus. <laughs> right, <laughs> they keep it pretty clean there. Actually, way cleaner than most of the bandos that we go in. So, well, yeah, I mean, this is actually open as a tourist attraction, and Sloss Furnace. Right. They used to be. Uh, I mean, that, that's why they call Birmingham the Iron City. Right. Uh, because this was a, a uh, ironworks for many, many years. It was the main source of uh, of income for a lot of people back in the day. And uh, it's just an amazing place. I'm glad they didn't tear it down. Glad they didn't tear it so down. You got, you got the museum set up there. They've got, uh, got the, like I said, they do the haunted house there every year. It's really fun. Uh, but finally this year, uh, my buddy Fly High. You know, fly high, mm -hmm. old Dave. Mm -hmm. He's in Ireland at the moment. We should call him, by the way. What time is it in Ireland? I think it's midnight in Ireland right yeah, now. Yeah, let's do that. By the way, he sent me this picture earlier. This is him by a real castle. So he's out there castle crashing he's right now. Literally crashing castles. Yeah, yeah. But uh, again, when is the date of the, the Sloss thing? And anybody's invited? Uh, as far as I know, everyone's invited to watch. Our, uh, you know, spectators are pilots. Okay. There will be some racing, and there will be some freestyle. I don't exactly know the structure they've got planned for it, but it's going to be a good time. If you ever wanted to rip something like Sloss, this is your chance. Now, what about uh, for, for years. what about access? Like, as far as uh, if you lose your quad somewhere, can you climb up and get it? It's yeah. TBD, I think, buddy. Uh, uh, to be <laughs> determined. Okay. All right. All right. Because it's no quad left behind, right? No quad left behind, bud. I am a I'm official member of the uh, NQLB family. There you go. No quad. Behind. Excellent. We'll get it. We'll get it back one way or the other. If we have to rig a Phantom Four with Dave's claw, I don't know oh, if yeah. you saw that. I really did. Cool. Yeah, Dave uh, 3D printed a rescue claw. Uh, right, let me just go ahead and. GPS drones are too weak to pick up a, a quad, but I have a Phantom 4 that we're gonna that we're gonna boost up a little bit and add it to it. Excellent. We'll have an official rescuer. Well, let me uh, thank some of these super chats that came in. Rob Muller, all of my Robs. Uh, Rob Muller, uh, six euros. Cheers from Harlem, buddy. Have a great TNL. And remember, the Robs got your back. Always thank you. Thank you, Rob Muller. And Drone Rob, 20 bucks. Thank you, Drone Rob. Happy TNL day to all. Leonard Oglesby says, not quite April. And here we are again. Arco Drone Solutions, two bucks. Thank you, Art. Appreciate it. All the way from uh, Colorado. Lloyd is going to South Florida Drone Meetup. Is is Grumpy in the, in the chat? Hey, Grumpy. Good to see you, man. It'd be good for you to get down there and, and see everybody. I won't be able to make it this time because me and Drone Rob have some secret plans that we can't we can't break. And it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. Not as awesome as hanging out with everybody in Florida, but almost as awesome. Uh force multiplier. Force multiplier. 
He's a new member. Welcome to the Heron Burst. Thank you for becoming a member. That's a great username. Force Multiplier. That is fantastic. Remember, you can gift memberships if you want. We just recorded some pretty revealing video, didn't we? Uh, the conversation with me and Jeff and Jody kind of went off the rails there at the end, and I revealed something about how I broke my back in 1986, if you don't know about that. Jody is uh, doing something there. He's, you're invited to be on the show anytime, bud. Anytime. Just hop on in there. Jody, <laughs> I think he's had too much crown. Uh, Aviano Rob, another Rob. Thank you. 50 bucks. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rob. See what I did? What'd you do? Pay attention to your chat, buddy. Oh, you just gifted 10, man. Thanks, buddy. You can drift off and ignore the show anytime when you're doing that. I was just drifting off. I was gifting no, membership. I know. You, you, well, you were, you were, I, di I didn't know if the stream had messed up, if your Skynet went down to give it. Thank you, man. That's awesome. And I think the way it works is uh, uh, it YouTube just doles it out to most deserving Random. randomly. So you have a free membership for 30 days and... If you decide that it doesn't suck being a member, well, then you can uh, continue. But you got the first month free. All the most important people just got them. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank just you very you. much. I appreciate Love that, Kong. Uh, and yeah, th again, thanks, uh, 50 bucks, uh, Aviano Rob C. Just stopping by to say hi. He says, 10 bucks from Uncle Stewie. Thank you, Uncle Stewie. Make Jody Uncle say my Stewie. name. Did you see what he says? What's he say? Uncle Stewie says, make Jody say my name because I am needy. So, I just said it. A special message right now for Uncle Stewie from... There you go, Kong. Go ahead and tell him tell him how much you love him. Hey, buddy. You and I have had many conversations. We, we've talked about Casey. We've talked about Uncle Stewie. Just know, Uncle Stewie's the wild man. Stay Uncle Stewie. Oh, this is so touching. And... And can't wait for Castle Crash 3D, buddy. Are you guys going to hug? Yes, we always do. We we have a tradition. Fly high. Casey and I always take a photo at the end of Castle Crash. So mm -hmm. this will be number three. Excellent. Are you going to do that long, yeah. almost inappropriate, long hug where you get to a point where you're like, this is pretty long, and and I'm going to pat him on the back and. And then, but it continues and it becomes awkward. You're going to give him one of those? You don't know whether you want it to become emotional and just shed the tear of love mm. or, you know, give him a kiss. Yeah. There's a lot of love going on at these drone meets. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that, I hope that uh, satisfies <laughs> Uncle Stewart. <laughs> what happens yeah. in the woods stays in the woods, buddy. Yeah. Uh, art. At C squared aerial image imagery LLC, twenty bucks. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm back. Well, welcome back. It's good to have you back. And now a heartfelt message to you from Kong. Who? Mm -hmm. Some dude. <laughs> no, hey man. No. It's from Art at C squared aerial imagery. Tell him how you feel, Kong, about that last super chat. I really appreciate it. Uh, it touches me in ways that Ken never has. Uh, and I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, good enough, good enough. And uh, uh, Ken Torbeck, two bucks. Uh, <laughs> TNL <laughs> dial up edition. <laughs> well, you're. Hey, you're... don't tell Starlink. It's working fine now. Starlink is fine. Elon Musk has your back. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Ken Torbeck is going to be in. The Discord. I will do a little bit of Discord. Um, hang on one second. Uh, Jody will entertain you for one moment. I have to listen. My my dog Henry had a little bit of a procedure earlier today. Is it time for the show? I don't know. Let me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. He's downstairs, and I want to hear if he's crying. He was zonked out and sleeping this whole time, but he had a little. I don't know. For those who care to know, Henry. Had to have his eyeball removed because of cancer and it got infected and i had to have it drained this morning from the vet so i know that's kind of gross but that's my little 18 year old doggy buddy and um yeah 
Jody, like you're... 102 dog years. That's that, that's a long, that's a good long time. All right, well let's. Uh, I'm going to try to make this uh, not too long. Uh, Paul Slathog. Slathog. I hope I'm saying that right. One day you'll tell me how to say your last name. Paul, thank you very much for uh, gifting five memberships. Thank you, buddy. 16 new members so far. That is fantastic. And now let's go ahead and get right into the news. Stop the music. It's time for news. Heading over into the drone newsosphere into the newsroom with Jeff Sills. What's happening, buddy? Got all sorts of cool news for you guys this week. Yeah. yeah it's a mix of different stuff. Uh -huh. But yes. first of all, the news is brought to you by Camera Butter. Ultra high quality ND filters, screen protectors, and FPV accessories. If you want no compromise performance from your camera, you need to get you some camera butter. Camerabutter.com. Camerabutter.com. And I will be giving away a hundred dollars towards camerabutter.com later on in the show. All right, so first of all, we have something new from DJI. Uh, apparently, they decided they wanted to put drones back in boxes. Ah, uh, the drone in the box. Meet DJI Dock 2, a drone docking system that broadens the horizons for unattended operations. DJI Dock 2 features a lightweight design with an approximately 70% reduction in both size and weight. The highly integrated body facilitates quick deployment. Good Lord, who's going to buy this, Jeff? Specially designed for DJI Dock Probably 2. Probably enterprise TV businesses, and the companies TV that need to have uh, drones on site. Yeah. DJI Dock 2 comes kind of with IP55. Oh, it's got a little anemometer on the top. That's also cool. integrates an environmental oh, yeah. monitoring system to perceive weather changes in real time, allowing it to operate in harsh climates and environments. The huh. Matrice 3D series drones have a max flight time of up to 50 minutes, significantly enhancing operation efficiency per flight. The maximum effective operating radius reaches 10 kilometers, Whoa. covering a larger operation scale. That's a long Matrice way. 3D, that is. equipped with a wide angle camera, a telecamera, and an infrared camera, can depict both. I want that drone. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I get the drone without the box? <laughs> Who knows? And a wide angle camera with a mechanical shutter. The dual cameras help to easily achieve one inch high precision measurement tasks. DJI Dock 2 integrates dual RTK antennas, quickly refreshing aircraft return points. With a 45 second takeoff time, the aircraft can reach the destination swiftly. Huh. Wow. Yeah, I see them using that down in Texas City around all those uh, oil refineries for doing inspections. I can see those things flying all over the place. Yeah, that's that looks pricey. I would imagine so. I have no idea what it costs, unfortunately. But uh, it probably is uh, enterprise-level stuff, so I would imagine it's going to be yeah. exceptional. It probably has a comma in it, I'm guessing. Yeah, not not for not for general general purpose use. Right. Um, so today, today was the first of Nebraska's spray drone conference that happened in Aurora. Back in we started back in 2019 when we first had the idea of you know coming together with drones and this technology and using it to spray. And back then, uh, drones were really just about how do you make a, a, a drone or a, a to spray from the air and it was pretty rudimentary back then but today it's really become you know the manufacturers are really driving the technology that controls the drone so as you watch this video you watch this drone come up to that tree line and it's finding its way around those obstacles you'll see it now start to lift and and lift above that pile of trees it's doing that all on its own there's no we didn't pre-program that into the drone so we just told it the grid to fly on. The manufacturers are really kind of coming to the point where it's less about, hey, can we fly and spray from the air, and more about how do we manage some of these issues that we've had in the past. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and what's amazing is that the, the ag drones are drones that are way beyond what we use. I mean, they, they're using hybrid fuels. They're using, you know, generators on the drones to be able to increase the flight times on them i mean there there there's some absolutely insane technology that's being put into these things um to increase the longevity of the flight time since they have to do these like huge fields and stuff really impressive stuff it is and when you have ag drones that are powerful you're gonna have rednecks that use them to hang on to and jump into ponds i've seen a lot of those yeah. videos so why not oh yeah you're paying all this money for the drone. Would you, 
Kong, would you hang off of a, an ag drone and let somebody pick you up? Depends on its toddler rating. Oh yeah, how, <laughs> right. How many toddlers gotta, do you? How many? To have at least. I'm thinking. I'm a big guy, so maybe probably sixteen to seventeen toddlers. You think you weigh sixteen toddlers? How much? You've you you've had a toddler. How much does a toddler weigh? I've gained a little weight lately. Right. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being too harsh on myself. Let's say twelve toddlers. Twelve toddlers. Okay. I don't know. Toddlers, if it's, if it's got a twelve-dollar rating or above, I'm good to go. What is what is the average weight of a toddler? Forty pounds? I don't even know. I don't have one of those. Thirty-seven feet. Thir okay. Well, we're, we're going to have to document this and get that out to the scientific community. We want accurate <laughs> toddler yeah. ratings. Yeah, we need we need we need uh, to toddler metrics. That's right. <laughs> All right. Speaking <laughs> of uh, speaking of heavy lift. Uh, so Virginia apparently is going to be the center of the world when it comes to doing uh, the first drone deliveries. And Wendy's is one of the companies that apparently is signing up with DoorDash oh. to be able to get oh. their drone right. delivery program. Yeah, this, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, what's better than the hey, drive through Well, we just showed you in and out. Maybe getting your order delivered by drone. I know you're super excited about <laughs> I just, you know, I just just can't work. I just love that people are trying, but I just see like 19,000 things that can go wrong. DoorDash <laughs> has paired up with Wendy's to offer its first drone-based fast food delivery. It's apparently happening. It's going to roll out in Virginia because all good things start in the state of Virginia. <laughs> There's no restriction on what you can order. So yes, a drone can drop off a burger, fries, a frosty, a cup of chili. A in, frosty? Intact, they say. Mm, really? Hopefully not in on your head. anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. Oh. How's this going to happen? <laughs> How is it not just all going to be? Virginia is for lovers. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> Wendy's apparently. Mother. And drones. Uh, for now, DoorDash requires people to have a front lawn or a yard big enough for drone delivery. I can see like the DoorDash <laughs> person coming over. Now you need two more feet. Yeah, right? <laughs> One big question people have is, should you still leave a tip? Oh. If a drone driver can no. drop a frosty into my yard without... They're, it? Yeah, get, they get 15%. Yeah, 18 propellers, a string that falls from the sky. What could go wrong? Well, and Ow. so if you're if you're one of the 21,000 residents in Christianburg, uh, Virginia, you will have the ability. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh. Nope. You have to be 2.5 miles away from two, 2355 North Franklin Street, which is <laughs> where the <laughs> Wendy's location is eligible. So if you're within 2.5 miles of that, single Wendy's, you, oh, wait, now you have to have a two-meter clearing oh. on your property, a oh. driveway or a front lawn, right. and it has, to, it has to be, you know, something that has easy access. Mm. Um, any of those people can have Wendy's delivered to their house. So out of the 21,000 residents of Christianburg, I'm thinking there's probably about maybe 20 that can get the yeah. delivery. So, yeah. What were you going to say, Kong? Could possibly be how after what'd you say how, by a drone. oh right by all those fans yeah all the fans plus it's what a good you, what altitude are they flying at probably at least a hundred feet or so you know right you're <laughs> well, gonna get no, uh, uh, uh you're gonna get a warm meat flavored hockey puck and chocolate soup that's what you're gonna get <laughs> exactly <laughs> Uh, it's I a gimmick. The dog that's going to run out and grab the order and bring down the drone. Right. Yeah, there you go. It's it's a gimmick. One, it's it's never going to happen. One good pit bull and it's all done. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So when this next game, footage. When all the warriors die. What's that? I said when all the warriors are dead, then it'll that, work. That's what I always say. Uh, when all the lawyers right. have died, then we will have drone delivery of this type everywhere. All right, so this next footage uh, comes out of Winnebago, Colorado, I believe. Um, and this is uh, from the WCSO Search and Rescue UAS. Um, this footage is of an elderly woman that ha had dementia, that had wandered away from her home. And the police used the drone to find her. Oh, cool. What was really impressive is that in the footage, they you know used the different... Uh, filters the the different ways to to use the drone but the detail that they get mm -hmm. is just astounding the information that they're able to to see and pull i mean this gives you a real insight 
into the level of how this technology has advanced. And that was something I really wanted to share with you guys because that one, it's a great story. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that she was she was found safe, but just it was awe inspiring. It really is. And this is no doubt this is a DJI drone and a lot of these DJI drones are being phased out of police departments slowly. Yeah. And that's gonna that's gonna affect these kind of rescues. Uh, yeah, it, it will be a shame. Yeah, but this poor woman, she um, she wandered off. I guess she has memory problems, perhaps, and yeah. she just ended up uh, sitting down somewhere. You know, it's it's very sad. I remember in when did when did the Phantom Three come out? The Phantom Three Pro was that 2017 or 18 around in there or something, uh, or even yeah, sooner? I, I'd have to I'd have to look that back up. It's been a while, but yeah, yeah the Phantom Threes. But I remember having that and being called by my local rescue people here in my small town, they couldn't send the helicopter up because the ceiling was too low, it was foggy. And they had an Alzheimer's patient that had gotten away and was wandering around in the woods somewhere. And they asked me to go search. And, you know, it's just a camera. There's no infrared or anything. Um, yeah, the infrared's really the key when it comes to that sort of thing, I think. Right, and I think if I had had that, we would have been able, because I, I did find him, but it was too late. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, and we had flown right by where he was several times. It, it, drones save lives in that regard. And I, I do hope that um, the powers that be will wise up and stop taking away these life-saving drones from departments. I think there's a lot of departments out there that are just saying, uh, Screw you guys. We're going to keep doing what we've been doing. Well, I was with the Chattanooga Police Department. They have a whole drone unit there with DJI products. And they were told, and they don't have a choice in the matter themselves, they were told by their local legislature that they can keep using their inventory, but if something breaks, they can't replace it. The battery poops uh, out, they can't get a new one. You know, they can't replace it. They would have to replace it with something non-Chinese made. And I think that's kind of a raw deal because they they train and they get used to using these these drones and they're fast with them it's going to affect lives right. it's going to affect lives having to get all these new drones <laughs> all right so if someone got confused and just ordered a battery for their personal drone and happened to bring it into yeah, the station and i asked them i said can people donate and uh they they said probably not yeah yeah you know, just, it's, it's, yeah, the restrictions are, are specifically there for the manufacturer of right. the drone. It's, it has nothing to do with the source of where it came from. Right. Because a lot of police departments are flying donated drones. So it, it goes to say that it's it's all it's all about DJI. So, all right. So back in January, uh, authorities were notified of a series of incidents that were happening at the D Drumheller Institution, which is a jail uh, in Canada in which a 35-year-old Red Deer woman had been flying drones uh, for a year uh, into the facility, dropping off packages inside of its walls. So they initiated search warrants uh, for her home in Calgary, and they found a drone, cell phones, drug paraphernalia, as well as quantities of methamphetamine, GHB, mm. psilocybin, and MDMA. Oh. Um she, she's been charged with possession of all of these drugs, plus possession of proceeds from the crime. Um, so she's expected to appear in court in Alberta uh, on May 17th. So hopefully we'll be able to follow back up on this in the future and find out what happens because uh, the investigation is not done and they are expecting much more charges to be pending for this. So uh, mm. definitely don't fly your drone into a prison. Don't do that. Don't do that. I had a guy call me once. This is a couple of years ago. I had a guy call me once. Hey, man, I'll give you $3,000. You fly your drone into the... And he just told me on the phone. On the phone. I've never been propositioned, but I know that Fly has. I think some guy offered him like five grand or 10 grand. Yeah. And he's like, uh, no, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I no. told this guy on the phone, I said, just keister it like everybody else, like a good, good old fashioned keistering. <laughs> you know? It's a prison wallet. Yeah, come uh, on, mule that stuff in. 
<laughs> All right, so on the flip side, there are some exceptional uses for drones, especially yes. if you're going to go into places you're not supposed to. And recently, uh, they have had uh, drones go into the Fukushima uh, nuclear reactor because uh, this is a, after the 13th anniversary. They are still trying to see the damage uh, and the status of the the reactor for the Daiichi nuclear power plant is this underwater? Uh, is this underwater right now? No, some of this. No, this this should not be underwater. This, oh. These are this is a they're they're flying like FPV style drones oh, okay. into a highly radiated area, and wow. you know the 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 reactors or the facilities where these reactors were they they exploded. So it's all, you know, it's very torturous. They were used to be sending. Uh, ground robots and with the uh, tractor tractor treads um and there was a great dr uh, documentary about it because the first drone got so far and then the radiation killed it so they made a better drone it got a little bit farther and a little bit farther it was fascinating to see that how they used yeah the technology to get into the reactor now they're flying fpv do you, drones in do you there, remember so. uh chernobyl they sent yeah. they sent in these ground-based robots and the cameras on them of course are analog right so yes. uh the closer they would get to radiation it would like dots on the screen and just and then it would just pff, and then that's it so I, it's a different with digital but wow so th that place is just going to be uninhabitable for a long time long time did it say what kind of uh, video transmission system they were using no, Good I didn't question. give any, any of the technical information. It was all about the fact that they put oh, a drone in there, that they were able to successfully get a drone in there and actually get footage because you have to understand that that area in there, no human will be going in there anytime soon. So, yeah. All right. So the Monrovia Fire Department is now going to start utilizing drones to extinguish flames. Oh. A volunteer fire responded to a fire with a home fully engulfed. The perfect opportunity to roll out a newly purchased drone equipped with a thermal imaging camera. Every day we find new new uses for the drone. Um, so on this particular event, uh, we found that the thermal camera on the drone was super helpful in spotting hot spots in this fire uh, after the, most of the fire had been knocked down to guide our aerial master stream. Lieutenant James Philly says nine members of the volunteer fire department have been certified to pilot the drone. With the drone's bird's eye view, Philly says fires are easier to spot and it keeps his crew safe. And so having this drone is, we call it a force multiplier. Um, it makes it makes quick work of, of finding those hot spots and um, putting them out. It also kind of helps us stay a little bit safer as well because otherwise we'd have to send personnel into the home or into the, the, the burned out building. Drone use doesn't stop at fires. It's a lifesaver, just like Priceville Police using a drone to track down a missing elderly man in Limestone County. We actually have a software with it that allows us to live stream the video to rescuers' handheld devices, whether it's a phone or a tablet. So we can, you know, if we're searching for a missing person, we can give a QR code to those rescuers and then they can view the live footage from the drone on their own phone while they're out and about searching for somebody. That is awesome. I love force multipliers. I love yeah, it's a force multiplier. That's great. Great, <laughs> great technology. Yeah, and, and that's all, all right. that's all DJI. All it's all really amazing like... how far I came. What's that? Uh, back in the day, there was early search software where they would go and they would uh, like take a huge pano of the area. Mm -hmm. And there was a particular set of software. I can't remember the name of it, but you could give it a, you could take a color sample and it would search for that particular color in the huge image and yes. zoom in on like a person had a hot orange jacket or something like that. Right. I forget the name of it too. I, and I remember that. And they're using AI now. Uh, with, yeah, in the same really, way. In the same way. Yep. Yeah. All awesome. right. So, for those of you in the audience that are FPV fans, you probably always wished that you had the ability to test your drone effectively uh, inside the house. You know, where you could sit there and monitor and see how it's working and and how it's moving. So, <laughs> digging around hmm. in Reddit, Voldy Forever posted uh, these. This video, this is a drone test bench. Oh, this neat. This is a video trial. This is a 2.5-inch FPV drone. Um, 
and he has it set up in this thing with a counterweight system and can essentially test his drone and test the controls and the movements and everything uh, within this, uh, this, this design. His, his main comment was is that if he put a 7-inch in there, it would probably rip it to pieces. So <laughs> That is but, cool. Uh, but in any case, yeah, I figured I would share that with you guys. That was that was in, in, in sort of an ingenious way of doing that. I thought that was kind of cool. Well, they use that same kind of contraption to train astronauts. For yeah. Like zero gravity. They'll, put, but, they'll have a human-sized one with the two concentric circles. And I've always wanted to get with NASA or whoever, whatever college has one of those. Put me in there and fly FPV. I think I could do it. I think you can put me in any, any which orientation. I think I could still do it. It would be worth a shot. I, I would be interested to see the results of that. I think that would be good because I've seen people get inside those things and try to do just basic tasks, mm -hmm. you know, and fail miserably. <laughs> so I would, I would definitely put you to the challenge on that one. Yes, Kong? If you think the Kong spins a challenge, can imagine doing that. Right. Like completely upside down. Right. Yeah, well, I, I have a, I'm, it sounds like I'm bragging, but I'm pretty good at being able to ignore my inner ear and just concentrate on the visual, which is what you have to do. Like when I was in the drift car, flying, following the drift car right. at the same time, you know, your body's feeling this and I, you just have to shut that out and trust your, I'm, your eyes. I'm feeling a twist to the Kong spin this year. What is it? I'm going to make sure that the quad is traveling the opposite direction of what you are spinning. Oh, well, that's just, I never thought about it before, but I think because usually I just spin whatever direction and you kind of fly off in that direction right. as you spin. But if you're doing the opposite, it's going to really throw for, people for a loop. For people that don't know what we're talking about. Um, there's, there's a meet called castle crash. And there's this cage on a chain hanging from a tree, and you sit in there, and it's and you spin. My monkey cage. It's a monkey Kong. cage. Yes, yes. Kong, Kong, the monkey FPV cage. It's it's quite challenging. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. All right. So uh, speaking of fun, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Skydroller Arrow is making a home in South Mississippi for their new aircraft testing facility. The sky's the limit here in Hancock County as Sennis International Airport is now home to a new testing facility for an unmanned solar powered drone here in Mississippi. Governor Tate Reeves, Mike Ezell, both senators for Mississippi, Roger Wicker and Sidney High Smith, had the chance to not only tour the facility, but also get an up close and personal look at the drone that Sky Dweller made here in Hancock County. They're not doing this anywhere else in the world, and it's because we can do things in Mississippi that they can't do anywhere else. It shows how far uh, technology has gone, but it also shows that we can do this right here in Mississippi with Mississippi people on the ground helping us to be successful. That is a great story, but I didn't hear anything after the reporter said, the sky is the limit. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that drone I, I love the fact that they sit there and they say it's going to just be a solar powered unmanned drone and then you see what essentially is a huge aircraft in the background it's a giant massive right you know drone that thing is huge so i is big. looking forward to seeing uh future news stories where they actually put that thing up in the air and fly it uh what's i'd love to show what's the what's the toddler rating no idea. There's no details on the drone. This is all about the facility. Um, but uh, like I said, as soon as Sky Dweller gets that thing up in the air and starts doing its tests, uh, I'm sure we'll be able to share some details with you. All right. So three mega brands are going to be the first companies to launch new drone delivery services in where? Virginia again. Ready? Mm. How about this? Yeah, yeah. We're talking about Walmart, Jeff, right? Yeah, so mm. DroneUp is a company that is going to be supporting drone delivery for Chick-fil-A, 7-Eleven, and Walmart mm -hmm. um, to deliver items to their co customers in a matter of minutes. Um, and the delivery service is, uh, you know, it doesn't give details as to, like, the range that they're doing, but the simple fact that they're doing this for three of the large retailers and some of the smaller retailers in that area, um, you're going to use lockers that will serve as delivery hubs. 
So uh-huh. the drone will actually deliver the the things to like a locker on a campus. Yeah. Oh, look, so easy. Cities. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and they uh, <laughs> they they say that using the secure lockers are going to help ward off porch pirates. Nothing about people running out there and grabbing the rope and yanking the drone out of the you sky. Got, but anyway, you so got, yeah. How many people are involved in that one package being delivered to the dude? Did you catch it? Right? So it's a person in the store yeah. giving it to the drone guy. It's a drone guy loading up the drone. Then then the drone pilot has to fly. Right? A, a, yeah. At least four people. So it's a gimmick. It, what What's wrong with just putting it in a car and taking it to someone's house? It's just insane. So I mean, I love actually, drones, but come on. They, yes, yes, Kong. Is the pilot actually flying, or are they just punching in GPS coordinates and it's kind of doing the its own thing? pilot is there as a secondary backup and a safety mechanism for the drone. Yes. Uh, the drones are flying uh, 60 miles an hour with a range of 30 miles to pick up packages and, and deliver them. So this is similar to, like, the wing system, and they can carry up to 10 pounds. Does Walmart have its uh, Beyond Visual on a site waiver? I believe they did get that did through they? the drone, uh, through the, the company okay. itself. So I, that's I, because, yeah, because Walmart is the customer. The the people that manage the the drone itself would be the ones that would probably fall underneath that guidance. Okay, so Walmart, the corporation, got it. So all their stores are allowed to do this then. Right? No, only select stores. Okay. It's yeah, gimmicky. The, Walmart's doing this in very select areas. They're they're very, very picky. Now, I was really kind of surprised to hear Chick-fil-A and 7-Eleven. Well, sure, because... they don't want to be left out of the gimmick. All the cool I, kids they're... are It's like it's like uh, all the billionaires have rockets. They, if Look, you're yeah. you're not a cool billionaire if you don't have a rocket. Chick-fil-A. Yeah. I yeah. can let's get Chick-fil-A because right. their facilities have these incredible parking lots and there's lots of room and you know, they've got those kids outside already. So it's it's easy, you know, for them to just, you know, throw the stuff into the drone. The, but 7-Eleven, I mean, <laughs> there's like, what, two people working there, you know, and the, one person has to leave the register at it's that just, point. It's just it's, bragger, like, it's just a gimmick. I hate to burst everybody's bubble, but everyone watching this will be long dead before any of this really happens. It's, you I, mean I, I can get slushy delivery from 7-Eleven? No, not until... Battery technology changes, GPS becomes more accurate, and all the lawyers die. Sorry, that's just hey, the way it hey, is. Yeah, <laughs> Jeff, they sell uh, tube socks at Walmart. Don't they? <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. They do. And uh, the thing is, is that I'm patiently waiting because the one company that will that will get us tube socks in in his uh, in his uh, front yard. First, I think is going to be Zipline. I really, truly believe that Zipline is going to get into that area before anybody else does. And the nice thing about Zipline is that there's none of that rope dangling crap. No, what do they do? It just flies. It flies by and drops it with a parachute. So the beautiful thing is that we can just we can just drop a parachute, two two sock yeah. boxes of okay. parachutes just, into I Ken's front yard. A parachute. I think you're thinking small. You're, you're talking his front yard. I want to build a tube sock igloo. <laughs> you know what? Barkley, yeah, yeah, no. Barkley, our buddy Barkley, he already sent me tube socks with his drone. It's been done. Uh-huh. No, no yeah, need. Yeah, 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 no, 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 no. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm talking. We're, we're talking mass, mass delivery tube here. Sock okay. Apocalypse. <laughs> I'm going to call Zipline and let them know that they're going mean, to need to make a specific you, flight. <laughs> path you mean and that they're going to need to get faa approval for all drones to be able to fly at a certain altitude over your house i think jody i think jody is talking about the sock apocalypse oh no <laughs> no it's the sock apocalypse oh no run <laughs> all right uh thank you so much jeff for your wonderful You're news welcome. i appreciate it and now, if you don't mind. Thanks for stopping by. Now get out. All right. Bye, all right. Buddy. See you, man. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Now is the time. On sprockets when we dance. That's for people over 40. And uh, here's where Jody tells us a joke. Not the dirty right. one. I- don't, don't tell us the dirty one just yet. 
Okay, not the dirty one. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is a real stinker. Okay. Brought to you by your favorite guy, my son Lucas. Okay. <laughs> your buddy. Yeah. Um. Why could the beef not lift the weight? Why could the beef not lift the weight? Because it wasn't strong enough. Strong enough. S strong. Bro strong. Enough. Okay. It's just. Do. You... Uh huh. Enough. Strong mm -hmm. enough. Do you have I, a. I told you. Do you have um. Stinker. Kong, do you have a drawing board at your house that he could go back to? <laughs> he needs to. All right. <laughs> no, that was. Don't tell me joke is much funnier. That was great. That will, I will pay him a uh, scale for uh, for being a comedy writer on the show. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much, Fly Tribe Magazine. Thank you for the 50 bucks, $50 super chat. He said, what's up, all? Did I miss the talk about Sloss, Castle Crash, and Minefield? Can't wait. Yes, you did miss it, but we're going to talk about no, it. it's loss. We did. We talked about Sloss, but we're not going to talk about Castle talk Crash. About, we, you, we absolutely have to talk about Castle Crash. No, no, Jody said not to. He said, no, we no, can't talk no, about it. No, I said Sloss first because it's the, it's the latest, and technically Minefield's before Castle Crash. Let's talk about Minefield. Okay, tell us about it. I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> I think, what is it, 4.0 now, buddy? 5.0, man. Oh, was that like 5.0? Yeah. Five. Excuse me. I'm sorry. 5.0. Uh, Billy Tripp is an awesome guy in Brownsville, Tennessee. Uh, he's really, uh, I guess, a, a eccentric art sculptor, to put it lightly. He, he's yeah. built these really huge, tall uh, sculptures there, uh, including a water tower, a radio tower, uh, several different art sculptures. Yep. Uh, it's a great it's place really to fly. A place. Yeah. It really is. Uh, go to Mindfield Meat, M I N D Field Meat dot com and uh, check it out. And that is it's August for... 24th and 25th, Saturday and Sunday. And uh, the it's mayor of the. Great for GPS quads. And there's a big field next door that you can fly wings at if you like. We had some guys uh, bring wings last year, I believe. Maybe an RC plane might have been out there, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yep, that's the campground. Camped out, had a real good time. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I'm, the mayor's going to come back. We're going to put goggles on the mayor. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. Good time. And also Castle Crash. All right, what's coming up next? Also Castle <laughs> August 30th through September 2nd. Uh-huh. It's in Trenton, South Carolina. Yep. Third year in a row. We're uh, really uh, stepping up to the plate this year. Uh We've got a really great uh, director's crew, man. Uh, we are all working really hard to make improvements. I've been uh, out there feeling out the community on what we can improve on and, and uh, you know, what they liked and what they don't like, you know. So we want to we want to emphasize what everyone likes and cut out what they don't. We're going to be a lot more organized this year. We've got oh, uh, come on. things for pilots. <laughs> You Go don't want to. You don't want to be organized, man. It's I don't. Our organization is the most fun. But this is where you where you can go to uh, do that uh, Kong spin thing. And I was. Right, why don't you Why don't you play that video with the crappy music again, Ken? Oh yeah, the video with the yeah, crappy the music. Angry... Yeah, yeah. The. Yeah. Well, I I couldn't play the um T Pain or whatever the hell you had because I get uh, a copyright strike. So uh, this anyway, is this is what it looks like, and I always park my cop car there so that you can fly on, in, and around the cop car. Power loop the popo. <laughs> yes, it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> and now, now what's what are the dates for this? It's going to be August thirtieth through September second in Trenton, South Carolina. Right. Uh, get your tickets early now. They're fifty dollars and. Uh, early bird prices are fifty dollars. Uh, after we stop uh, the early bird prices, they'll be seventy-five. But one of the benefits of getting the early bird prices, you also get your um, a uh, customized Castle Crash uh, dog tag. Yeah. That our buddy Fun Per Volt is printing up for us. Uh, if you if you wait to the last minute and you have to get the seventy-five dollar ticket, you still get an FEV dog tag. It's just not going to be customized with your name on it. 
Right. Uh, so get them, get your tickets now. Get the early bird in there. There we go. We got the drawn drag racing. That was Bot Grinder uh, the first year he won. Really good times. Uh, we've got different freestyle challenges set up here. You see what's going on there. Yeah. Um, and and Kong will give you an awkward uh, hug. Free awkward hugs <laughs> only, from Kong. Only if you win the Kong spin. Right. Right. Right, right, right. Uh, so... This uh, from Specimen FBB. He, he really tore this place up right here. This is the Grand Hall. This is going to be the Whoop Village this year again, where... Uh, all the whoop guys can set up gates and rip and race through here all night. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> as far as the organization, we're going to have things set up for every pilot to do something. If you are the type of pilot that just wants to get out, relax, rip, we're going to have three different flight lines going. If an event's going, it's going to be on one of the flight lines. The other two are wide open just to go hang out, have a good time at. Right. Uh, we're going to have uh, side quests this year, which were going to be like different challenges. Uh, we're really focusing on the 3D thing this year since it is Castle Crash 3. We're going 3D. Right. Who's going to be the queen? Stonegate. Who's the queen? Zoe FPV. Zoe She's FPV. Come out and show us all how it's done. Uh, we're going to have classes in the morning. Uh, Zoe's going to show people how to set their quad up for 3D. Yeah. At the same time, I'm going to be hosting another event or another class and attend on basic building and how to fix your quad and things like that. Uh, right. we're, we're going to have some 3D printing workshops set up. Uh, man, we, we really have a huge amount of stuff planned. It this is going to be great. And the food is great. And uh, it's, 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 come out, but it's shortly after stuff. Minefield. Uh, so, you know, you can take a tour. You can just leave Minefield and head to Castle Crash. Uh, Minefield? Really? Free. Castle Crash, $1,000 per person, right? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, you have to cuddle with Fly High for a uh, thousand. That's right. You can be the little spoon with, with Fly High. Little, he doesn't play the, he does not play the little spoon. He won't do the little spoon. No, he's, no, no if, if anyone knows Fly High, he is always the big spoon. Uh, always. always, always. All right. Well, now before I share, well, maybe I'll share one. A viewer video. Uh, hang on a second. Let me check on the doggy. Okay. He's all right. He's still sleeping, I think. My little doggy had some surgery this morning. I need to listen for him crying for me. Um... Should we give away $100 to Camera Butter right now, or should we play a, a video from a viewer? Let's do a viewer video. Make them, make them think about it for a minute. Make them wait? Okay. Hey, I yeah. wanted to, but Kong, he, you know, he said no. So we'll wait. We'll wait. So, Kong? Yes? I want to show you an amazing video. This is absolutely amazing. And this is from 4Fans Aerial Photography. You, have you ever been to Chicago for St. Patrick's Day? Not for St. Patrick's Day, but I actually have been to Chicago once. Okay. Well, you know what they do in Chicago on St. Patrick's Day? And that they uh, dye the river green. They dyed the river green. Check this out. So this is from 4Fans Aerial Photography. And this is how they dye it. They just put the green stuff in boats and drive around. Uh, this is, I wonder uh, what green stuff is. Oh, it's probably toxic. Probably it. It's, it's totally toxic. Um, this it's is. Uh, what's that? What'd you say, Kong? I said a bad word. <laughs> I think your backwards bandwidth is uh, backing up again. I can't hear you. Say it again. I said, fuck these fish. It's St. Patty's Day. <laughs> you know there's going to be some green fish, right? <laughs> That's got to be confused, but doesn't that look amazing? And what a great thing to see from a drone. Absolutely awesome. What a spectacle. I don't know how long it takes it to uh, stop being green, but I imagine long after St. Patrick's Day. That's what she said. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, 4Fans Era Photography. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. That was fantastic.
Um, Big shot. That is uh, that is epidemic sound, by the way. Epidemic. There's a link for it in the description. If uh, you don't want any kind of uh, 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 YouTubery uh, getting their their panties in a wad over the music, oh, then God. Yeah. Well, and they they will. Uh, use Epidemic Sound. Free trial links in the description for 30 days. You get to try it out free for 30 days. And uh, it's got a lot of sound effects, and uh, it's really great. It's really, and their interface has just been updated, so it's really cool. Epidemic Sound, everything else is a crap. 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 True. Uh, yeah, jo- I just got, I just spent uh, a good amount of time today editing a video. I was stoked about it. Timed out all the music timed out really well, uploaded it, and YouTube was like, eh, eh, "You you can't use Jimi Hendrix Voodoo Child <laughs> anywhere." Right, right. It's like, but Jimmy would really love this video. Yeah, man. Jimmy would, but you know, um, I I have to believe that even even channels that aren't able to be monetized yet, and they're using copyrighted music that that's got to tell the algorithm something that's not good for you. So if you're trying to become monetized, just act like you already no, are, I, you know? I don't I don't ever really care about monetization on YouTube, man. If uh, if I get big enough that I that I think I could make any money off of it, I'd start a Patreon and be like, "Hey, if you want to give me money, I'll do it Patreon. I'll, I'm not going to compromise my my uh don't get me wrong. All you guys use epidemic sound, but yeah, you know, I'm still rocking. Yeah. Thanks. Rock you're, with- you're the best guy to have around when I'm talking about a sponsor. You're the best. I would, I would, if I was, if I was a, uh, Jody, uh, huh. Uh, huh. I would use epidemic sound a hundred percent. Thanks for backpedaling. <laughs> I still love you, but you're an idiot. Uh, anyway, so, hey, use that Jimi Hendrix. Use that Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Heck yeah, you can. Uh, as I now I have another, I have another sponsor. You want to crap chat on them? Tell us some crap chat about, uh, camera butter. How like, it's all right, but I use, uh, Larry's. Yeah. Best co-host ever right here. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let's go ahead and give away a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars. Camerabutter.com. Now, I know, Jody, that you use Camerabutter.com. I know you do. I've seen it. I've seen it on your on your drone. Okay. All right. So what I want you to do right now, in the chat, this is not a pick me, pick me, but go to Camerabutter.com right now. All right. Pick out an item. We got filters, ND filters for your camera. We got 3D prints. We got all kinds of stuff. Motors, everything. And this is a Canadian company, camerabutter.com. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste a $100 coupon code into the chat. All right. And then the first person to use it wins. It's that easy. Jody, your thoughts, if any. My thoughts are... Yeah, tell me your thoughts. <laughs> Better be fast if you want to use that code. All right. <laughs> Johnny, you're awesome, man. All right. I was checking with the uh, Castle Crash directors, man. I wanted oh, to you make are. sure that okay. they didn't have Oh, any, I see. You're multitasking. I got you. I got you. All right. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to post three coupon codes, and only one of them is valid. <laughs> am, am I a stinker? Yeah. But I think this will make it. Yeah, I think this will make it a little bit more interesting. So, $100 coming at you. Is everybody ready? Boop. There you go. There are the numbers. Copy and paste them. First one to uh, cash that in at camerabutter.com will win. Please let me know uh, which one you are, if, if you got it, okay? A hundred dollars, a hundred dollars. Ooh, boy, exciting. And while that's going on, I'll ask Jody. Yes? Uh, do you want to see 
parking a big rig or an Avada crash? Which one do you want to see, sir? Say parking a big a parking a big rig. Parking a big rig. Or Avada crash. Avada crash. All right. This is from uh, Larry Johnston, and he sent this in uh, here. By the way, you can send in your videos, KenHeronUpload at gmail.com. Let me know your music source, because, again, not that Jody uses it, but everybody else does. He uses Epidemic Sound. Free trial links in the description. <laughs> all right? <laughs> I'm going to tease you about that all night. All right, so here, <laughs> here is the Avada crash. He says, I crashed my Avada. Here it is. The music and sound are Epidemic. Of course. Enjoy this. Oh, under the bench. That's nice. Very good. Ah, under the sign. Nice, nice, nice. Uh-oh. Joe, do you see what I'm saying? Trees. Oh, no. Oh, uh, what are trees? Dicks. Uh, there they are. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm back up again. And into another tree. Oh. Never that, farm. That, wow, that was a twofer. <laughs> I thought it was just that, the one tree. Yep. The tree literally reached out and grabbed him. He, it yeah. was flying along. No limbs in his path whatsoever. Yep. I saw it. Grabbed him. He, yeah, they'll do that. Because trees are what? what the hell? Be nice. They are. They are. Yeah, well, thank you very much for okay. sharing that. Uh, I'll be accepting all of your... Crash videos for Drone Crashes 13. Is it my 13 yet? Yeah, 13. Uh, Ken Heron Upload at gmail.com. Make sure you send me a streaming link and let me know what music you used in there, too. What you drinking, Jody? Uh, some apple juice. Apple juice? Yeah, that's apple juice. Apple flavored juice. <laughs> All right. I have been authorized to give away oh. one free pass to Castle Crash. And we are also going to be doing custom pendants for campsites. So it's basically like a flag with your pilot name and oh. the Castle Crash info on it. Okay. That you'll be able to stake up outside your tent to kind of claim your campsite as, uh, you know, okay. whatever FPB.com, Fly High FPB or whatever Kongs. <laughs> And this uh, is, uh, how much cash value is this? Uh, I believe it's about $150. Oh, my God. $70. How do you want to give it away? You want to do a pick me? Ooh. Let's do it. Mm, I that. Let's do a pick me. Let's do a pick Who's me right now. You? All right. Pick me, pick me. Say pick me and then uh, Kong FPV, a.k.a. Jody, will pick someone to win. Make sure you have your. Pick. You have you to pick. Well, uh, do you have the chat up or no? I can pick if you. I've got it. I've you got, got it? it? Okay. So make sure you have it in live chat and not top chat. Top chat cuts out some some people. So pick okay. me, pick me right now. Live chat. Oh my goodness. Mm. Oh. You got the winner yet? Oh. Okay. How many people that really want to come? Yeah, there are. Well, I mean, this is $150,000 value. <laughs> and the winner is... Our junk pick. Oh, Mike, junk pick. Okay, congratulations. Do you know who that is? The name got me. I had to, <laughs> I had to go with the name. It, it really... uh. Hit the old funny bone, so I went with it. That is Sarah's father. <laughs> Do you know the 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 young teenage gal with the English accent? That's her father. Oh, huh. yeah. They okay, usually cool. hang. They usually hang out in the Discord after the show. If there's a moderator that could put a link to my Discord, we'll we'll hop in there after the show. Kong, you gonna be able to come hang out for a minute? Yep. Okay. okay. Sure. All right. Cool. Well, congratulations. It looks like uh, junk picks coming to Castle Crash. Excellent. Uh, glad gonna be glad to have you, man. All right. I'm telling you, this year's gonna be really fun. It really is. 
And you're going to bring, and, are you going to bring apple juice for everyone? Uh, someone is bringing a large amount of beer and a large amount of alcohol, but it's not Castle Crash crew or any of us. It's no. just going to be there. I don't know how it got there. Right. We're not responsible for it. No. Uh, I mean, it's just, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, it looks like uh, USA Drone Flyer, Captain Joe America, just won the $100 from Camera Butter. All right. He ordered he ordered two ND filter sets for his two Avadas. Thanks, Camera Butter and Ken. You are welcome. Congratulations. Man, we're giving away so oh. much stuff. He chose, the, he chose the correct path. He did. Yes. Go forth, my son. Choose the correct path. Um... All right, Jody. Yes. Now, now you must pick between uh, the Hot Springs Tornado Aftermath and some ice waterfalls. Uh, tornado Aftermaths are always kind of depressing. Let's go for the the, the ice waterfalls. Ice waterfalls. Okay. They are kind of depressing. <laughs> I don't want to see anyone's panties in a two by four. No, we don't want that. Tree. We don't want that. Uh, but we're going to watch it here in a minute anyway. Uh, All right. Yeah. So this is from Alex. He says, hello, everybody. This is a short video of Mont Mor Morency Falls in winter. Enjoy. Best regards, Alex. Alex has been sending me stuff at uh, KenHeronUpload at gmail.com for years now. And very early on, I'll be honest, uh, his his video was unwatchable. <laughs> Alex, hey man, we all start somewhere. Yeah, but I mean, it was like, you know, like we all do. We we start out with like toy drones and stuff, and it was all shaky and everything. But he has come a long way, and this is actually really, really good. So uh, enjoy this from Alex. Thursday morning, Monrovia Volunteer Fire responded that is not to it. a fire with a home fully. That is not it. Stand by, I'm being told. I clicked on the wrong thing. Here you go. This is in, This is in Quebec. You been to Quebec? I've never been to Quebec. Looks like a beautiful place. Uh, Maybe I'll go in summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of the cold myself. Yeah. Wow. Good spot, though. Look at that. Really pretty, but too slow for me. Yeah, you'd be diving the falls, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Good job, Alex. Very good. Keep sending your stuff in. I appreciate that. Very, very pretty shots. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, <laughs> I absolutely appreciate GPS shots. I started GPS Phantom. Uh, two, three, four, and then uh, but I have a Phantom Four. The poor little guy's been in the box for three years since the first time I flew FPV. <laughs> have you not flown? I've never gone. You never, never gone back. Well, I mean, you you bought it to fly for fun, right? Right. Yeah. And so I should. I really, I really should get it out and fly. But I think we're just gonna really dedicate it to be a quad rescuer. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, you know, it's still fun. To fly anything, really, but yeah. uh, you should charge those batteries once in a while. Uh oh, batteries are <laughs> I'm sure toast. We're gonna yeah. cut it open and see about putting in some. Uh, uh, Make it run on six S. Yes, batteries, two three S batteries on each side. To, yeah, to balance it out. Okay. You just have, to have the smart battery in it for it to register the the uh, encryption or whatever it is. The uh, hardware recognizes right. it. Well, and many many use, people uh, fly drones for different reasons. You're flying for fun, mainly. Uh, other people fly but, for for business, and you know, there's drones are are uh, different things to different people. Uh, and yeah, now, I'm just glad everyone can find a find what they like in the hobby. I accidentally threw out. <laughs> There it is. Okay, this is the one I wanted. This is from our buddy 
uh, SKS video guy, uh, Scott. Also, uh, somebody who hangs out in the Discord. Somebody will put my Discord link in the description. Uh, this is him parking a big rig. He drives an 18-wheeler for a living, and he put up the drone, and he's parking in a really tight spot so you can see how he maneuvers it. You didn't tell me that. You just said parking a big rig earlier. Uh, well, you you, yep. I thought it was some guy with a, a selfie cam parking a big rig. You didn't no, tell me there no. was a drone. Oh, there's a drone component, of course. Um, he I said should have known. He, he used his Mini 3 Pro to get a top-down shot. Enjoy. I'm my truck today, and I'm at a place in Maryland called Fresh Baguette. It's a bakery that makes baguettes. I thought it interesting to show you some footage of me backing this big rig into the dock here. I wouldn't be able to do it. Oh, no way. It would take me four hours. <laughs> okay, they're done unloading me. I have pulled forward out of the dock. Now let's see what it takes to get out of here. Wow. Well, that was certainly interesting. That's a tough place to get into. It actually was harder to get out of the place than it was into the place. As a consolation prize, they did give me a baguette. So that was nice. I appreciated that. We'll catch you on the flip side there, good buddy. That's a big 10 forward air trucker. <laughs> Your thoughts, Jody, if any. That baguette looked nice. <laughs> Are you hungry right about now? No, I was. I was gonna say. I, I wonder if he was actually watching him his feed live while he was operating the truck to assist himself. Oh yeah, that would be that would be very helpful, wouldn't it? Camera, even better. Yeah, the top-down view from a drone. I imagine he did. I might even be able to do that if I had drone-down view like that. That's pretty cool. Um. One Yes, I I rented a Denali a few years ago to take the family down to PCB. We had a lot of friends of the kids with us, so it was very impressive with all the different cameras that it had on it. It actually had a top-down shot that almost looked as if there was a drone hovering above the vehicle. It was really trippy technology, the angle of the cameras that they How do they create, do that? It, I've seen that before on cars. I don't know how they do that. That's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. You'd think there was cameras on sticks on top of the car or something. Yeah. After I rented that Denali, I almost went $80,000 into debt because <laughs> I really won. <laughs> I was like, take this thing away from me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So now we have to, we have to watch this uh, tornado aftermath. All right. Here we go. Okay. This is from my friend John Taylor. He's one of the crew that was with me when we did the Route 66 across the country. And then uh, the guy hit and ran me in Flagstaff and took me out of the game, and they continued on without me. But uh, John Taylor, a.k.a. Scout, because of all of us, he was the slowest driver, but the only one to get a speeding ticket. <laughs> <laughs> am I laughing? Yes, John, I'm sorry I am. That is ironically funny. But uh, here it he is, is filming the... Um, the tornado uh, aftermath that hit Hot Springs Village in his hometown there in uh, Arkansas. So uh, this is good. This is good stuff from John. Just blew the trees down like they were nothing. Look at that. And tornadoes are terrifying. I'm telling you, man. Do you ever have any out your way? I had one towards my direction a couple of years ago that was really devastating to the neighborhood and to the local uh, Jacksonville State University campus. It was super scary, man. You're out in the was, boonies. Do you have a, a tornado shelter? Uh, I do not, but I actually uh, dug one or the majority of one. I need still need to try to finish it up. It was just really hard to do, but the ground's really hard. I had to rent a jackhammer and stuff. I, I've got one started, but uh, have not completed it. Mm. I may end up just going ahead and buying one from uh, the hardware store instead of trying to spend all that effort into building one. Yeah, they have some that sit above ground or half underground or something, like on a berm. You cover them up a little bit, I guess. Yeah, they have. 
they have like these metal type shelters that you can bolt down to a concrete slab to. What would you put in there? What would you put? What would be your survival uh, gear in there? Of course, you'd have to have your apple juice with you. Your apple juice. Uh, I think they're not really meant to stay in and survive. It's just meant to get out of the immediate danger of the tornado. Well, of course, and let it pass. Of course, but but uh, you, you can't, know, you want to have a little, a little club, bit of clubhouse. Apple juice, some, maybe some uh, chocolate chip cookies and a and a peanut butter crackers. You know, yeah, the, you know the essentials. Yeah, the essentials. Um, thank you very much, uh, Ken Torbeck. By the way. <laughs> For a super chat, five bucks. He says the river in Chicago is green for about five days. The fish love it, but it is a bit of a hallucinogen. That's what we need. We need hallucinating <laughs> fish. Yeah, so they just swim right right into the net. Right. Uh, St. Kenny, five bucks. Thank you, St. Kenny. <laughs> says, hey, guys, I called DJI earlier, and in one of my questions I asked if the Goggles 2 will work with the new Avada 2 coming out soon. She confirmed it. Okay, so that's good. Uh, um, are you... I would give that about a 75%. Yeah, have you heard anything? No, but I know not to trust that type of oh, answer the... from DJI. Right, because... the compatibility thing, because all they want to do is sell stuff, yeah. Right, a lot of DJI sells one hand, doesn't know what the other hand's doing, and so on and so forth, but... Yeah, it's all rumors and stuff till we finally have it released and we know what's there, and someone else breaks it down. Right. You know what I mean? How how much better is the next generation of stuff going to be? You know, like the. Oh no, I'm still rocking the V2 goggles. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. Um, I think the three and the V2 goggles are the perfect combination. But what about but like the O four unit? <laughs> what I'll like know. see what what could it possibly? I mean, the only thing that I could see that would improve would be n night capability. Yeah, that would that it would have to be the low light capability. Yeah, uh, maybe to be able to switch back and forth between frame rates to to drop it down low enough to get uh, better uh, light coming in. Right. I still have uh, several. Uh, vistas with polar cameras on them for night flying. I have kind of like a side fleet for night flying. Yeah. The uh, po the polar with a vista or an air unit is really the perfect combination. You can damn near see in the dark with those things. What do you have in the background there? Can you unblur your background? It, I, I it, honestly don't know how I blurred it to begin with. It it blurred in Skype by default for some reason. So if you go to yeah. uh, if you want to get real trippy. I can change view mode. Yeah. Well, uh, I can do this and then show you. You go up here to the things and then go over here to this thing here. Go to settings. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I can't. It's really hard to see on my phone. I know. But you go to settings and then I think it's uh, audio and video. And then you go down here to change background and click on nothing. Did that help, or would that was that just weird? Stand by. And the reason why I'm asking him to do this is because there's some quads on his wall I want you guys to see. And while he's doing that, let's go ahead and just take a little break and hop into the Raz Chamber. Ah, oh, so relaxing, the Raz Chamber. Welcome, everybody, to the Raz Chamber. Oh, it's a wonderful place if you've never been here before. <laughs> It's just this purple and blue goo that we sit in, like a giant hot tub of ectoplasm. Nothing can go wrong in here. Everything is fine. Everyone gets along. Your taxes are done. That scab went away. Your herpes cleared up. Everything is good. But there is one rule, one suggestion. And what rule is that there, Jody? Do not hoot in the Raz. Please, as relaxed as you are, don't fart in the Raz. Now enjoy. Ah. Carl's Corner? No way, 
say Carl's Corner? Carl? Oh what the hell, man? We just said. We just said don't fart in the red. Did we not? I think I, I think we did. He's a rule Jeez. breaker, that Carl. Gee whiz, man. We just said. It's, like, it's almost as if he did it for spite. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Have you been eating as asparagus, Carl? Is that asparagus? I, I was thinking of ketchup. <laughs> I don't know what mustard. that is. It smells like something my dog would leave behind. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so we've got uh, a non-blurred Jody there. What do you got in the background? T tell us about your little area there. Is this where you do your builds and stuff? The workbench, yeah. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, what are you working on on the workbench? Well, I'm about to dismantle this guy. Yeah? Oh. The old frame that they don't make anymore. I have no interest in trying to chase down a spare arm, so I'm going to dismantle it, take the guts out, put it in an apex. What uh, What frame is that? Uh, it was it was one called the Kronos, I believe. It's it's uh, one off from another uh, quad builder. Okay. Uh, it, uh, I got this from uh, another uh, FPV pilot that I actually did some work on it for, and then he decided he didn't want it, so I bought it off of him. Just the older frame, but uh, I'm gonna. Throw the guts on an apex frame. It's basically an apex clone, is what it boils down to. But. Do Do you have a grinderino? I do not yet. Um, I'm really excited to get one, but Dave gets them and he sells them out so fast. Yeah, I I that, was uh I was given I was given one by our buddy Matt, and uh, of course uh, I'm lucky enough to have a friend who builds these things for me because I'm lazy and I don't like to do it. I can do it clearly, but I don't like to do it. It's it's not it's not fun for me. But uh I'm very excited about getting a grinderino. Now Dave Dave sells them. This is flyhighfpv.com. He's in Ireland, but his store is still open. Where's the grinderino on this page? Where the hell is it? Uh Where? go over to menu. Yeah. Frame. Oh, that frames. Okay, let's see frames. There we go. There we go. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You actually get that you can get the whole thing for 500 bucks. It's got a O3 air unit. Um, you can pick Crossfire ELRS. Uh, and he comes he'll, with his skins. He'll build. He'll build it out for you. No, no, no. It's all the things to build it. But it's all the pieces. Okay. He does. He does have some guys that do builds. I do builds for him sometimes. Uh, <laughs> I'm not very fast. I work a full time job. I I can knock it out as I can. I I do uh, really focus on detail. I I'm very focused on aesthetics. So my I'm more of a go slow and get it right type of guy. Right. But. I am very slow about building, so. Well, and I does have some other guys that are pretty quick. They can crank it out a lot faster than I can. But uh, right, if you're interested they, in getting yeah. a, a getting an FPV quad and you and you don't want to build it, there's there's so many people in the community that will build them out for you. And one of the people, uh, and I do want to mention this again, she was on last time, and that is Zoe FPV, and she will mm -hmm. specially build your uh, 3D quad for you. And there, there are a few things that she does with tuning and everything that really m makes it nice. I've never flown one of her personally built 3D quads, but uh, she does, she does do this for you. Uh, Absolutely, it's always awesome, man. She, she is up. awesome. Yeah. If you're ever interested in getting into 3D flying, have her build one of these for you. She will tune it and give you all the right parts and all the advice, and yeah. So uh, hey, this is. Like broken. Said, she's gonna actually be giving a class. Uh, I believe it's gonna be Friday morning at Castle Crash. So all you guys that are interested in 3D, practice in the sim, practice in the sim, come to the class. She's yeah. gonna show you how to hook your quads up. It's gonna be a good time. It is, and uh, her website is brokenpropshop.com. Brokenpropshop.com. All right. So go there and, and uh, support her. I'm glad. I'm glad you brought up the uh, Grinderino kit, buddy. 
Yeah. So, uh, again, it's essentially the frame, of course. You get an O3 air unit. You get your choice of ERS or crossfire receiver. Got an all-in-one, uh, all-in-one flight controller, uh, ESC. Uh, you get your motors. You get the whole shebang, including fly highs, 3D prints for 500 bucks. And for Castle Crash, uh, I don't think that the site is quite up yet. They're going to be working on it in the next day or two to be able to buy tickets. But we we are selling $25 raffle tickets to win a full Grinderino kit. Wow. Alternatively, if you're not interested in the Grinderino, you can have a $500 a uh, fly high gift card. So you get your tickets. It's going to be announced uh, the first day of Castle Crash. That way you get your Grandorino kit and you can do your build there at Castle Crash. We'll help you get it built and up in there before you're gone. Excellent. Excellent. Yes, sir. Yep. And pretty much the entire, if you're, you know, if you're a camera drone guy, a GPS guy, and you're interested in dipping your toe, and you can go to any one of these events, my event, his event. You can hit up pretty much any FPV guy you Both. see on online. Where they're all very helpful. Everybody's very helpful, and they're wanting to help you get into it. Yes, Kong, what do you got there? This is a 10-inch build that I just completed for a client. Yeah. Uh, you going to plug it in? I absolutely have to add the bling to my build. <laughs> you got to have the bling, man. Hey, you see the bling? Get the trim job on there, the purple trim. Yeah, we That's love custom. we love trim. Yes, sir. <laughs> Got to get some trim, right? Yeah. You going to plug it in? I am going to plug it in. Uh, Brick, you might want to put your sunglasses on. Yeah, brace you yourself, everyone. Brace yourself. If you got your Eclipse glasses, put those on right now. Look at that thing. That's fantastic. It is so sick. And like I said, once it's up in the air and far enough away from me, the light so intense and these it looks they look like purple wings flying in the night it's crazy that is awesome that's fantastic is that rgb or is that one color because it looks like it's got a purple theme to the whole thing it's, it's all purple okay excellent it's dave it's a, a dave purple 6s led strip if anybody wants to get a hold of you, um, I put your links in the description, your Instagram, everything, so they can get a hold of you uh, through there. And make sure you follow them. If anyone has any questions about Castle Crash, get at me. Get at Fly High FPV. Get at Uncle Stewie. Z Bones FPV. Uh, Bob Noxious. Uh, Kevin Sumner's recently joined the board of directors with us. It's great to have him on. Any of those guys, we're all working super hard to provide an awesome event this year. We're really hoping it's going to go off without a hitch. Yep. Or you can just stop by Minefield in August and see him in person. Both. Yeah. Bo both. both. Of course, both. Of course. So I've got one more video, and this is from our pal in the UK. This is from Steve, Skycam Video. He says, hey, Ken, buddy. Steve here from the UK. You're number one fan, he says. Just thought I'd send you a video I recorded before my heart started to pack up on me. I'm on the mend now, hopefully, so should be out and about soon. Feel free to share this on TNL. Uh, so this is the Giants seat. This is uh, one of the sites on the coast in the UK. Check it out. Join me this morning as I'm on my way to the Giants seat, or Giants chair or something, in Silverdale. So there's Jenny Brown's point this way. This is a giant seat, or oh, giant's chair. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's a giant's chair. And it looks like probably the rope and drone. Let's get it in the air. Kong, do you have a mini? Do you have a mini? You do own one? No, I do not. They are like I said, I've I pretty much stepped away from GPS once I went FPV. Yeah, well, they are so dependable and pretty much unbreakable. Of course, I broke mine a couple times, but uh, they're just they're so good. Very, 
I saw your video with the leaf blower really giving it hell. I was impressed. It, yeah, it really is. You'd think such a light drone would just blow away like a leaf, but it fights it. It's a good little drone, man. That's what he's using here on the coast where there's probably some good winds going. Probably the closest thing I'll get to a GPS drone again is in a boat if I get one. Yeah. What's the film and dude, I have to say, I'll catch you on the next video. The, uh, Guys that put the uh, Avada motion controller on his head, the quadriplegic guy, dude, that story really brought a tear to my eye. That that is awesome. I wish I had that video handy, but yeah, I was I was talking for those who didn't see it last last show. Um, there was a a, a guy in uh, I think he's in the UK, and he was asking me about options for flying FPV without the use of his hands and i suggested the motion controller aka dildo for the avada and i said well why don't you just you know i didn't want to say he's strapped a dildo to his head well I, and i said that's what i said to him i said just tape the dildo to your head <laughs> and he actually 3d printed something i wish i wish i had that i just i don't have it handy but he, he 3d printed something where he could put the motion control on his head and he could fly it like this and he and he used his teeth at, for the throttle it, it's amazing to i would like to try to fly that way i probably could not but i guess once you get used yeah, to it i don't it, think i could either but yeah but i've been asked many times from people who have figured out right? mo mobility issues how how they could fly and you know if if you are watching i'm sure he's made it available on thingiverse the 3d print so other people could do the same that is really cool i know that fbv Saved my life. Like, I know that it absolutely has to make a huge dramatic impact on his. Yeah. I couldn't imagine being stuck like that. That's in, that's terror. That's like terrifying. Well, I mean, you get used to it. You do. You you deal with what you have. Right. You know, um, he was very uh, athletic and active and everything, and and suddenly uh, he wasn't. So he adjusted, and he's a super nice guy he still gets out you know if you go through a traumatic injury like that go through depression and, and denial and eventually hopefully you come out the other side a better person like you said so many people have found drones not just fpv but drones a very liberating and freeing thing and it, it does save lives i know it 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 saved zoe uh it's saved a, a bunch of other people from depression people suffering from depression they get out and fly and they find a new community and uh, who was it, Jody, that got you into into FPV? Who was it? <laughs> who was that? That was you there, King. <laughs> <laughs> and now you have surpassed me, sir. <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far. Well, I mean, you you could you could build better than me, faster. I, I fell into the beaver pond. You did not remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. What, what's the name of that place? I, I, we were flying at, a, at, at an old abandoned uh, girls reformatory and there's a mm -hmm. building that's in the water and you fly through in one window and out the window and inside the building, it's all water. And there's like a well in there. It's what's water. And I'd never been it flown there before. And Dave's like, ah, go ahead, Ken. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, but I made it through. And then um, somebody, somebody crashed. Who was that? That went in the water. Uh after the fourth time of making it through, I crashed on the fifth time, yeah. Oh, well, How I mean, many times did you go again? I went through twice, uh, and I didn't want to push my luck. Because I pushed I, my luck. Because I saw what you had to do to retrieve your drone, and I didn't want to drive home five hours wet. <laughs> hey, but my quad survived and flew very well after that. Uh, shout out to Brandon FPV Worry FPV. Yeah, that stuff is great. It makes really shitty lube, but it makes great uh, formal coating. Yeah. Oh, that's conformal coating. I'm talking about Worry Free FPV. Oh, oh, are you are you doing a sponsor? I'm shouting out for my boy Brandon FPV. Oh that yes, Brandon, so absolutely. Yes, he gave me a tube of that. Yeah, the like I said, it, it's the world's worst uh, lube, 
<laughs> but it makes great water sealant for flight controllers, ESCs. It is the world's worst it's lot, lube. <laughs> it's a lot easier to deal with than the con, conformal coating. Uh, the the MG chemicals you shared there is more like uh, acrylic nail polish. Yeah. The uh, worry free FEV is more like a silicone base, so it's a lot thicker and chunkier, but it's also uh, it helps reduce shock, and it definitely will waterproof because that quad that went in the drink uh, went in the drink uh, probably two or three more times after that, and I, I still fly that that flight controller and ESC no problems. Uh you're welcome, I, Brandon. Yes, yes, Brandon, you're welcome. Um, I do want to mention another super chat right here. Um, Mappers2, thank you so much for the $10. He says, thanks, Ken. We are looking forward to April 8th total eclipse here, and we'll drone shoot and photos. And yes, the ticket was not good. Okay. So. Everybody's so excited about this eclipse. I know, I know. but And, and getting in your drone is not going to get you closer to the sun. And I understand why people want to film it. But please use the, the proper uh, ND filter with your do not point your camera at the sun don't do it <laughs> don't don't do it um unless unless you have proper protection on your camera make sure you have the proper your nd filter eyeballs at the sun right <laughs> right that said do you know what i'm doing for the eclipse <laughs> it's crazy what through special glasses no i'm getting in a little oh. in a little plane and following it, me and my morning show partner, Jason, and a couple of his buddies, we're going to get in an actual little plane and follow the eclipse. Now, they, the shadow? Well, the, the shadow goes faster than we can. So we're going to kind of enjoy the eclipse a little bit more, and it'll pass us, and then we'll land, you know. But we're, we're, that's the plan anyway. We're going we're gonna to watch the eclipse from a private plane. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I hope oh, oh, private plane. Oh, well, oh, yeah. I know, right? Well, you know, it was either that or watch it from the yacht. I wasn't sure which would be more fun. There you go, flex <laughs> that YouTube money, big no, dog. No, no, I just happen to have a friend who has a plane. I don't have YouTube money. I really Everyone don't. Everyone, now where your super chats go? No, well, private I, if, if it weren't for the super chats, these lights would not be on. That's a fact. But uh, thank you, everybody, for support in the uh, with the Super Chats and for becoming a member. Got 16 new members tonight, man. That is fan-freaking-tastic. Thank you. Um, I do a Patreon. I don't talk about it a lot, but uh, all of the, the same uh, benefits if you become a YouTube member is also available in the Patreon. So if you're a Patreon guy or gal, then uh, it's there, too. Thank you, St. Kenny, for the two bucks. Appreciate it. Happiest of Easter's to all of you. And with that, I think uh, I'm going to have to shut this down now. I think that's about it. Did we cover everything? Did we? Oh, wait a minute. I got to talk about re remotepilot101.com and Jason Shepard. You know that guy with the two watches and the smile that's visible for three statute miles. You know that guy. The smile hurts my eyes. He... It does hurt. It does hurt your eyes. He and you know, uh, he hung out with us in Chattanooga last week, and I can tell you this: mm -hmm. he smells fantastic. I don't say that about he a lot does. of guys. He have you ever had a chance to smell I, him? I have. We've met him in Minefield a few times. Yeah. He he smells of uh, lavender and wood shavings. Well, <laughs> lavender and wood shavings. That's right. So anybody that smells that good has got to have a great course. To learn to get your Part 107 certificate, use Heron 18 to get 30% off right now. Go to remotepilot101.com. If you're interested in becoming a manned pilot and you already have your 107 certificate, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump and some lavender or wood shavings to get your manned license. Go to m0a.com for that. He is uh, an author. I'm he telling, knows his I'm, stuff. I'm yeah. telling you right now, there's a ton of free information on the web. There's a ton of free information on YouTube. Mm. But it's only going to get you about 65, 70% of the way there. That, honestly. That's actually honestly. true because I thought 
why am I going to, when back in 2016, I thought, why am I going to pay some knucklehead to teach me? I'll just learn because the FAA says, oh, we got all the information in our study guides. Bullshit. <laughs> There's so many questions that aren't on the provided study guide. It's ridiculous. It is. And but, the government would no. never try to fool you, would they? No, they would never do that. No. No. But, uh, never. And he, uh, Jason updates his curriculum whenever, you know, people take the test and they notice a, a new question. They will report it to him and he will make a supplemental video about it. So it's up to date. RemotePilot101.com. Use Heron18 to get 30% off. And uh, once again, uh, Kong, are you going to be able to join us in the discord afterwards yeah, buddy. excellent so uh i'll i'll put the discord link in there and i guess uh that is about it don't forget don't forget the next thing coming up is sloss drone derby right Real soon we're talking uh what uh almost a week to go yeah a little more than a week saturday april oh. 6th yeah. And that'll be at Sloss Furnace in Birmingham, Alabama. I put the uh, the even bright link that you're seeing here in the description. So, if you if you even have a doubt of not wanting to fly this place, Google Sloss Furnace pictures, and once you see what you're getting into, you're you're gonna love it. It's a hundred percent. Twenty five bucks is nothing for uh, this type of. Uh, availability to get into somewhere like this. It it's, really is a unique so opportunity to, to get into what is essentially a state park or national park. I mean, because that's how they treat this place most of the time. Um, but yeah. Oh my gosh. Are you, yeah, just look. Yeah. Like, can you imagine? All, of the, <laughs> all those factories and stuff that you drive by all the time and you're like, God, I want to get in there and fly. Yeah. This is that and you can actually do it. Yeah. Man, I wish I was going. I wish I was going. I, I, I can't. Well, I have a thing on the same day. Once you see what I'm doing, you'll be like, Super uh, secret. I know what you're doing. It's a super secret. Anna. Yeah. Did I tell it's you what I was doing? Go hang out with some rapper. I'll give you that. Did I tell you what I was doing? You did tell oh, me. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's a secret. Yeah. I'm but not it's, sure. it's, but you agree. You agree that. Of the two, I, I do agree with you on this one. It's it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. The oh, ditching oh. my birthday to go to I some know, random I, I, event, but I did make uh, it to your birthday, didn't I? Cool, but did, did I did go up to my birthday? Because I told I told that rapper, I said, "There's no way I'm missing Cog's birthday. I'm gonna go out in the, the middle of BFE, Alabama. Screw you and your." Your 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 hot sidekicks there, Mr. Rapper person. Forget it. I don't want I don't want anybody hey, twerking on me. Not when it's Kong's birthday. <laughs> yeah. We had a great time though, did we not? Oh, we did. There's always Tannerite. Anyway, that was fun. That was fun. was fun. All right, so I'm gonna put the link to uh to the Discord, and I guess that's about it for this edition of Thursday Night Live. We hope you enjoyed the show. Half as much as you would have if it had been twice as good. Yes! Oh, what a fun night. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. I appreciate all the support. Uh, and the Patreon, again, you can uh, check out the links in the description. Thank you very much for becoming members, all the new people that did, and for all of your support, as always, monetarily, and for just being here. Thank you so much, Jody, for co-hosting. I appreciate it. And thank you to... Sir? Jeff Sills and uh, and everybody else involved in this. And uh, I will be back in a couple weeks with, with more awesome stuff. Our guest next time, to be announced. So look for to be announced to be on the show. Until next time, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Buh. And bye. <laughs>
enjoy pigeons or keep pigeons or keep the killer to process me. They are enjoy pigeons or keep pigeons or keep when you give your family a treat. It's endless nutrition to help them grow, and it's full of fiber to make them grow. You enjoy pigeons or keep. You'll enjoy Thursday Night Live with Ken Heron and Kelly Jeff and Bo Sharp too. There'll be fun and quizzes, Kelly's misses, the bird is the word in the news. It's the number one live stream, it's got pizzazz. There's only one rule, don't fart in the rats. If you think it's funny, super chat some money, cause TNL is here for you. 